I need to turn this ordinary piece of PVC pipe into something that looks like this, a coil for a crystal radio. And it's uh, quite simply all you're doing is wrapping a, a wire across here. But the trick to it is that you need to have a really clean wrap along here. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there's some cracks in here where the wire is not uh, tied up against here. And that's because the wire got a little bit bent. So when it was laying on here, it didn't go up nicely against the last thing. And this is the maximum you want as far as a defect in your coil. You definitely don't want kinks in it and you don't want like where this is happening a lot because uh, yeah, it just won't work as nicely as it should. So um, there's two parts of this. There is the target. So this is where the wire is going to go. And then there's where the wire is coming from. And in many ways, the source is more important to keep in control than uh, the target because if this starts unspooling wrong like this, it'll start kinking, it'll get out of control. You'll end up with uh, bends in the wire that are hard to get out. You'll uh, end up working your hands really hard trying to straighten the wire out, getting it smooth. Yeah, it becomes not fun really quickly. Now you may say, okay, I've got this old transformer like this and I can just, you know, run a wire through here and hang it off something and then unspool from here. But yeah, it won't un unspool nicely. It'll kind of go lump, lump, lump as it goes around and it'll be easy to get out of control because as it flips over, it'll try to unspool off the ends and it, it'll just, it'll end up a mess. So this is actually unspooled from something like this. And you can see this was originally uh, solder. So yeah, I uh, hijacked this, uh, this spool and stuck my wire on it. So yeah, uh, today I'm going to uh, create a mandrel and a uh, wrapping station so that I can produce a couple coils in short order without ruining my hands. Um, because yeah, in the past I've just taken it, uh, start your wire in a hole like this and then you start wrapping it around and uh, you contain this. I don't know, I've hung it. Uh, I've used the toilet paper tube holder. Uh, stuff like that and use that to keep that in control and yeah it works but after a while you know your hands get really crampy and uh, I got to do two or three of these so yeah uh, it's better if I have some kind of a tool to do that now uh, let me jump over and show you what I've got uh, working on the target side I've got these two little cones and you can buy wooden cones and I've seen them online for like a buck. But when I checked with my hardware store, I didn't have it. And the nearest place was across town. So I just got out the 3D printer and printed them. But you just need a cone, uh, something, you know, like soft pine would be excellent. And it's got a hole through the center of them. And what's going to happen is we do like this. We do like this. And then we run this threaded rod through the center of it with a little bit of hardware and that will keep our target all nicely lined up um, and it will allow me to turn this nicely now one disadvantage of this is yeah this this will help you know your hands not get so crampy because you're not like struggling wrapping the wire around uh, but uh, with this if you like halfway through, you decide you need to get some tape to tape it off so you can go to the bathroom or something, uh, you can w get up and walk around with this thing, <laughs> with this. <laughs> You're tied to whatever uh, it happens to be. So I'm going to put this between the legs of my drill press. Uh, I've got a drill press table and it's got uh, perforated, uh, I call that perforated metal. And I'm just going to stick it between there uh, and that will be my... Uh, holder for it and then I can just kind of wrap to my heart's desire. Okay, so there's that and uh, let's see let's see if we can do this. Get our threaded rod and we'll put that on there like that. Put it through our blue pipe. Put that on there. Now on this end I've got a big washer and a couple nuts. And then I just repeat that on this end. Um, yeah, you 
can still see that. That's a nice tight fit for that washer. There we go. And again, we'll thread some nuts on this side. And then once it's uh, held like this, um, yeah, you can uh, just start wrapping away, put your wire on there. Also, I like to use white glue. Uh, so I smear white glue as I'm working along and help hold the wire in place like, you know, forever type thing. And because your hands are all messy and slippery and whatever, this really helps to have something like this that will hold the wire for you, hold the tube for you. And uh, yeah, it's not as prone to slipping out of your hands because they're all gooey and wet. And yeah, when that happens, you end up getting to rewrap uh, a good portion of your coil, which kind of ruins the day. Okay, so let's go on to the next step and uh, get this thing set up and so you can see more how it's uh, gonna look when it's finished. We're out here on the back porch where it's gonna be kind of noisy, but I'll try to talk over it. Uh, I got things set up. Of course, we'll get in a little closer here in a second, but uh, here's the uh, winding mandrel. And of course, I got a comfortable place to sit because this is a long process and you don't want to get all cramped and uh, kind of give up on stuff because it's you have becoming overwhelming. Um, this is important. And again, we'll show this a little closer. This is the uh, source wire and I got it inside of a box. So that'll give me a little resistance as I pull against the wire. Also, it will keep the wire from rolling away or the, the wire from unspooling off either end. It'll keep the keep the spool rolling nicely. Um, I could back here, you see this wire hanging down. I could hang it off of there, but it doesn't give me enough resistance. I don't like that. I, I sometimes put wire up there when I'm doing something like this. But uh, in this case, I chose to go with the box because again, it gives me a little more friction. I've got some other stuff here like my glue that I need. Let's get in here a little closer and uh, see what's really going on. Let's look at how I got this set up. I can remove the uh, hardware from this side and I can pull this and I can loosen these up and slide this off and then replace this thing just from this one side. So the spring and all that over here stays uh, constant, same place. So all this hardware over here is locked down. And again, I can just pull this loose as I need to, uh, put in the new one and get it ready to go. And then of course, uh, when I'm ready, I get this going like this. Now before I forget, Gotta get that locked off or when I let go, it'll jump on me. While I've still got this loose, I need to load my wire. So I'm gonna take my wire out of my box and I'm gonna put it through this hole I've already pre-drilled in here and I'm gonna get myself quite a bit of wire um, like this. And that way when I pinch it off, it's gonna help hold it in position. Now I'm going to pull this over here, put my washer in place, tighten these down, and I'm going to get them really snug. And then I'm going to use my tools I got here to lock these off. Um, and then finally, when all that's ready to go, I will finish off this side with the uh, necessary second nut and lock that off. Like that. And of course I'll use my wrenches to secure this and this because you don't want this popping loose in the middle of your job. Now, one of the things you may notice is why are there some red rubber bands right here? And that's because during a winding, if doorbell rings, got to go to the bathroom, whatever, I got to have something to hold this wire down so I can just slide these across. If you forget those, once you got all this going, yeah, it's kind of late for that. But as an emergency measure, I got my tape here. Um, and that's pretty much it for the mandrel setup. I, uh, I'm not going to start winding right now. I'm going to make another video on, on actually creating 
the uh, windings across here. Um, and yeah, so, but for right now, this is the mandrel as opposed to holding this, trying to hold this by hand and, and spinning it like I have in the past. Uh, it gets very tiresome and I don't know about you, but you know, after a while your hands start aching and it's like no fun. Okay, so the other part I promised to talk about was the box. Uh, a little bit closer up on that. As I pull on the box, you'll notice that this, this is trying to roll and this box will contain that. Uh, it's going to control the, the spool from going side to side and it's also going to keep a nice tension. So even if I accidentally let go of this, you notice it came a little bit loose, but it's not going to go sprawling and, and release everything. So, um, you know, if something, uh, some accident happened or whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to lose a little bit. I'm going to have to go back and retention all this, but it's going to be good. So yeah, maintaining control over your source of wire is just as important as maintaining control over your target. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop there. And again, I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to wind one of these up and make another video on that. But as far as a uh, winding mandrel goes, this is a very helpful setup. Okay. So I hope you found that useful and interesting in your DIY crystal radio building.